So basically just to sum things up, hang on, I should've got better light with him. I, sh I should've tried to put my lights better so that we could see him much better. I don't know. But the, the, the whole point is, basically when you're taking care of the baby hair, the most part, if it's, you know, quality mohair being used is, um, you just need water. Um, I, if I really, really feel like I need to put something in it, I might put a little bit, like, about that much of fabric softener in the water because it is mohair. Um, and that's it. Um, but even for the most part, I just use water. Um, and, you know, be careful with, you know, using like, um, dyes and, um, you know, don't sp spray perfume and stuff directly on your babies and, um, you know, different stuff like that. And you gotta be, um, aware of, you know, your surroundings when you lay your baby down, nothing on nothing firm, nothing sharp, you know, just make sure that also like, you know, some people, you know, you don't want the oils and stuff to get on them. I usually wash my hands every time I interact with them. Um, I've gotten kind of bad about about it lately, but for the most part, I usually wrap them in a blanket when I'm holding them. But sometimes I just pick my babies up and I don't. They don't have a blanket necessarily all the time um, anymore. But you know, I'm not oily. <laughs> Um, I guess, but everybody body produces oil. So you, you know, you want to be careful of that. And one thing you want to think about is that, you know, the alcohol can take off the paint, you know, sometime if it's not cured properly or depending on how the person painted your doll, you know, you don't want to risk that. I mean, it shouldn't bother it, but you don't know because you didn't paint it, you know, so, um, when you do perfumes and stuff like that, most of them are, are full of alcohol. So, you know, if you want the baby smell, I say spray their clothes and let it dry. You know, let them hang out or wash their clothes in, you know, a nice smell, baby, you know, baby dress or something like that to give it the baby smell. And that, um, and like I've told people before, Washing your baby in Johnson & Johnson baby bath is not going to change the smell of the silicone. Um, it, it, it's a mind thing. I, I've never had them start to smell like a baby when you wash it because it's not real skin. They still smell like the silicone <laughs> for the most part. Um, now, the baby powder used to do it, but, you know, it's been years, maybe since Zoe since I've used baby powder as, you know, powdering down my babies. You know, some people still do it. I don't think it's like the worst thing in the world to do. A lot of people are using these different matting powders. I can't really vouch for that because I don't use matting powders on my baby. In fact, I don't powder my babies after they've been, you know, painted and matted. Um, but I think, you know, a lot of people have, you know, they swear by this you know, matting powder after, you know, you get a doll and you might have a shine spot here or there. I think it's all okay because it's a good maintenance. I know, um, um, Claire Taylor sell her matting powder now and I'm pretty sure you can dust it on the baby just the same as you would like the other matting powders out there. Another popular matting powder that people talk about is the Just Matte Matting Powder, um, by D3. Um, but like I said, I don't, I don't use it. I'm not going to say that I won't use it. I said that when I do like maybe my cuddle baby or something like that, I may experiment on it. I have heard like a, a sculptor when she was doing a video saying, um, she sent the matte powder home with her babies, but she was like, make sure you don't matte over like any glossed area because it will matte that area. And I'm like, oh gosh. So if your baby has gloss lips and you use the matte, it, it takes the, the, the gloss off or, it, you know, dims down the gloss. Now, I don't know if you, when you wash it, if that will come back, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've heard them say that. So 
you know, that's the only thing I probably would be careful. Don't do the face as much. But I just don't want my baby's color to be dulled down with powder on it. So that's why I don't do it. And, you know, primarily I have um, African-American or black um, inspired babies. <laughs> I say inspired because skin tones they ain't got no DNA. The skin tones is, you know, inspired by black babies or African-American or biracial. And when you put the powder on it, I don't want it to be, like, dusty. But I think if you take just a little bit and, you know, dab it or brush it lightly, then you'll you'll be fine. Um, but that's what people recommend now. They say don't even use the, the baby powder. So now the baby powder is just a prop. Um, just trying to think of stuff real quick in case you don't want to listen to that long chatting video that I just did while I was getting him dressed. Um, if you see anything start to peel or something like that, don't pull it. Um, a lot of people will take the tweezer and just, you know, take that little piece off, but I wouldn't bother it if you don't know what you're doing. Um... A lot of people also ask about like um, because the babies are so expensive, they can be anywhere from two thousand to twenty, thirty thousand um, dollars. They ask about like spa care or you know do the artists you know have a warranty on the babies? Absolutely not. And the reason why is because the interaction that we do with the dolls and stuff, and you know if they go doing that, it's not that they don't stand by their work, but just imagine how many all they would be doing be taking it'll be a revolving door and just think every year i know me if i could send my baby back every year to be refreshed i would probably do it every year <laughs> i ain't gonna lie i'll be like hey can you touch this can you do this can you do that you know if it needed it um or if i if just the slightest little thing just because you know um or, you know, can you upgrade this, you know, type thing. So usually when we buy these babies, most artists tell you once you buy the baby, that's it. Um, unless within the first, like, maybe 30 days or so you have an issue. Um, most artists are going to tell you that they don't take it back. And there's several reasons for that, guys. And, you know, don't don't get all bent out of shape when, when an artist tell you that. Because one thing that I learned about the silicone is that it's very very fickle um you cannot like say for instance and and we don't know exactly what these people pouring with number one everybody can say they're, they're using smooth on but they may not be using smooth on silicone they in we don't know anyway it doesn't matter when collectors get their babies home you know like these little nipples like this you know I don't know if it's latex or it's silicone. It's actually supposed to be silicone, and I think it is silicone, I'm pretty sure, because I sealed it with silicone, and it, it adhered, and silicone only adheres to silicone. But here's the thing. you People use latex pacifiers. People use latex nipple bottles for props. People put their babies on all different types of things, and... Stuff like that. You bring that baby into your studio or your paint area. And it's called cross-contamination. <laughs> you use your paint brushes on a baby that has something with latex in it. It don't cure. It won't cure on the baby, right? Then you, you don't change your paint brushes and you use it on a different baby. Now you messing up not only the one you were repairing you couldn't fix. Now you don't mess up a baby that you were trying to paint. A lot of times bringing all that stuff back into your paint area is very risky. Um, you just, so that's one of the reasons why people don't do it too. You know, silicone's not easy to correct. Unless you've been doing this for a hundred years or so. A lot of people, even people that's been doing it for a long time don't know how to fix stuff. I know a couple artists that can fix almost anything. But most new artists or you know even some of the the fairly seasoned artists don't know how to fix this stuff and it, it the problem can get worse so that's why that's one of the reasons why people just tell you no um two like i said if you it was your at your own fault and all that and stuff people don't want to go 
dealing with all that headache and you know it's not normal it's not a default or not because of the something the artist did um the other thing is pacifiers like i said don't use latex pacifiers i know they're cute i like them as well but don't use them and i and i and i say that over and over again i have said that before and specifically said don't use latex pacifiers don't put pacifiers in the baby mouth don't do this don't do that and i've had people actually do it and um still do it like and then anyway so you you have to when people tell you don't do certain stuff sometimes it's just for your own good um make sure like i would use the um the ky the original ky um for the um on the nipple and just a little bit and just rub it in and then it ease right in it's so much easier even than the powder because i we used to use the powder back in the day but the powder used to use this like donut look like the baby been eating white donuts on the face and the mouth and so the the um ky don't do that and it eats and so easy and you don't have to really push or you know hold the mouth down because sometimes when you do this if you some people pull so wide if you could tear and stuff um but every so often just take a damp cloth and wipe out because it does build up residue as well still the um ky um cleaning your baby like dust in the eyes you can take just a, a wet cloth damp cloth or a q-tip and damp it and clean the baby eyes um just like you would your reborns if the baby get fuzzies from blankets or whatever the case may be it's okay put them in room temperature water or cool water or whatever i don't know which one people prefer but i feel bad sticking a baby in freezing cold water i know it's a doll but my my psyche just won't let me do it so i have to do lukewarm or you know like room te temperature and i'll just rinse you can just rinse the baby off it doesn't bother them um just you can pat dry or let air dry don't rub when you give the baby a bath don't take the cloth and scrub it and all that now i kind of do that a couple times when I'm in the process because I want to make sure I got everything off and everything is good. That also tells me that my baby is fully cured because nothing came off and the baby still painted. So, but on a care, regular care basis, just rinse the baby off. You know, don't, you can, you know, squish the sponge or whatever, but don't scrub the baby. It's don't, don't do that. It's still painted. It's still a painted canvas. Um, the hair if you got any type of product in the baby make sure you turn the baby backwards over the sink just like you would a real baby and rinse it backwards so that the chemicals don't run onto the paint onto the baby um if your baby has tangly hair because either it was rooted you know very pluggy or not directionally rooted or whatever the case be i did find that the the um fabric softener does help that but just make sure you hold down the root like this when you comb through you know start at the ends and, and work your way up but make sure you hold the head the hair down like this as you do it you know section by section this kind of keeps it from pulling from the roots because the hair is not sealed and you don't want to um you don't want to pull the hair out so um that's one thing the baby's hair might shed a little bit especially when they first get home sometime if if they're not really like fully washed and rinsed out and brushed out and got all the excess extra hair on the baby because um mohair is like that when you're rooting it but in most cases most people are gonna rinse it you know once they cut it and all that and style it but you still may have some experience some shedding a little bit so it's kind of good when the baby hair is pretty full but nevertheless um you have to root deep if once if the baby is rooted pretty deep it's not gonna like shouldn't be leaving like bald spots right away um but you know some people are heavy-handed and you want to comb the baby like you know silly on the color purple and that's just not you know 
but it hurts her. Okay, sorry, but you can't, you, you, you just can't do it with the silicone babies. Um, I don't recommend human hair in silicone babies, but to each his own. I feel like the strands are too thick. It's just, you know, I don't know, but people are doing it and you know, whatever. I prefer the mohair. hair. Um, but that's that. Um, some hair, like straight hairs and stuff like that. Um, I've heard like a paca and different, I don't know. I've heard different stories that some hair don't stay, but then there's people that got babies that got that same very hair that done had, had it for years with the original rooting and it's still intact. So we just have to take care of them the best we can. And just like we do when we go out and buy a $30,000 car, we drive it, we enjoy it, you know, three years later when the warranty wear out, the we start having tune-ups and issues and you know little things that we have to fix the car wear and tear you know some of us still keep it and ride it till the wheels fall off and we don't care that's the same way i feel about my dolls if they start to have wear and tear over years and years i don't care i don't care until they fall to pieces i'm still going to keep them um if it's a baby that i love and i'm not going to feel like i throw my money away because i've enjoyed it for the years so that's my spill on it guys don't let people scare you enjoy your dolls um play with them hug them love them pick them up give them sugar boogers <laughs> and just know that they're not going to be perfect they are a form of art um with silicone more than anything it's not going to be like a crisp deal. There's going to be something here or there. Um, shouldn't be nothing major. Um, but yeah, and we can talk about what I consider to be a real um, defect versus just normal. Because a lot of people will be like, oh, that's just normal for silicone. Da, 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 da. Uh, we can talk about that in another video if you guys want to get into that just let me know in the comment section but for now i am done and i will talk to you guys later i thank you for watching i hope that this video helped some of my sisters in the community that are expecting silicone or want them but just afraid to get them because of whatever horror stories they've heard um but that's that oh what happened it got real light i don't know what happened